to start this video by congratulating you and honoring you because you had a baby, right? You've gone through the birth process and now you have this baby. And I want to take the time to check in with you and see how your postpartum is going, right? Like what's up for you in your postpartum period? This whole episode of Apothecary Wisdom today is dedicated to supporting the women and the mothers who feel like they're experiencing the postpartum blues and the postpartum depression, right? So on this episode, we are going to talk about the immense life changes that you're going through, explore all the symptoms of postpartum depression, and then more importantly, the solutions, right? We're going to talk about radical self-care, the foods to improve your mood, placenta medicine, herbs, meditation. We're going to cover all of that. And so if this is our first time meeting, my name is Maria Chaudhry, and I'm a mother and a midwife and an herbalist. And as a mother, I had an awesome birth experience and an incredibly challenging postpartum experience, right? And as a midwife, I've had the privilege and opportunity to take care of hundreds of women. And I provided all their prenatal care, their childbirth education, their labor and birth support at home, and postpartum care. And I offered more postpartum visits than the other midwives like my more than my mentors because I had such a challenge in my postpartum experience, I saw the, the need for it. And as an herbalist, you know, we created an herb company and we make all these nourishing herbal remedies for your fertility and healthy menstruation and to support your vibrant pregnancy and your postpartum recovery process and your breastfeeding and for your children and their wellness. Right? And you can learn more about us on our website and you go to birthsongbotanicals.com and you'll find out everything you need to know. I just want to also say before we get deep into the video, this is a live video, right? And so I'm encouraging you, I'm reaching out to you to have a communication and that we are, you know, communicating and talking about this as a conversation. The thing is, I'm in front of the camera and heaven's behind the camera, so I can't see the comments. But when I'm talking and saying things that really resonate with you, please comment, chime in, share your stories, give hearts and thumbs ups. It just really makes the experience so much more enjoyable. And we're talking about depression, so we gotta lighten it up in here, y'all. Okay, and also, if you're gonna watch this later on YouTube or on SoundCloud, just go ahead from the beginning, push like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell, especially if you like videos about birth and women's health and spirituality from a midwifery and herbal perspective, okay? So here we go, I wanna deep, dive deep into this, and I wanna start by acknowledging like how immense the whole pregnancy, birth, and postpartum process is. The birth process, just the act of giving birth, is a forever life-changing event. You are never the same after you've given birth, right? And, and then like you've carried this baby inside of you, and then you birthed this baby, and now you're taking care of this baby. And for like a lot of you, you might feel really open and really like vulnerable and some of you are feeling wounded and some of you are traumatized, some of you are uplifted, but this is a video about postpartum depression so I don't think you're feeling all that great or you wouldn't be watching this video, right? And so it's like after you're feeling all these ways, we're trying to put all the pieces back together after you've been so opened up, like wide open. The thing is, the pieces that you're trying to put back together, they're, they're different. They don't look the same. Your identity's different, your body's different, your needs are different, your emotions are different, your relationships are different, your finances are different, everything's different. And you're trying to put all these pieces back together that's, that's different, and you're trying to put them around, now you have a new baby and you're trying to put these pieces around this new baby that has an immense amount of needs, right? 
And so even though you're trying to put all the pieces back together and they don't, they're not like what you're familiar with, I do want to remind you that you've just been upgraded, right? You have been like coded with the symbols and the marks of a mother and you are forever like expanded and evolved and have become this next level. And so of course it's challenging and big and real and raw. You're a woman and you're a mother. So I just want to just acknowledge that right off the bat. And I do want to say like, okay, you're trying to put all the pieces back together and you're going through hormonal shifts and sleepless nights, right? So no wonder it's a challenge. And then of, and what is a, re, a reality is that a lot of women suffer from postpartum depression, right? And then the statistics say it's as many as 10 to 15% of women suffer from postpartum depression. But I think it has to be a lot higher because as a care provider, I know you don't tell me everything. I know that, right? And so I know that we're, there are many, 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 many more women that suffer silently, right? So I just want to take a moment, check in with you, put in the comments and see how you're doing right now. And, and I mean, and if you're feeling the weight of the depression, I want you to know that you're not alone, even if you're feeling lonely, okay? And now more than ever is the time for radical self-care. And so like it's time to start caring for yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit, your heart, your soul, your wisdom, as much as you care for your baby, okay? You need compassion and tenderness and attention in all realms of your life. Mm -hmm. You do. We do. I do. You do. We do. We do. Okay. So let's go into this next section. And I want to talk about the fourth trimester. Okay. So we know that birth is not the end of this whole pregnancy process. I mean, we, you know that, but at the same time, you know, you don't have the baby kick in your bladder and you know you're entrenched in this whole expansion that I just told you about. And um, I guess I just want to remind you that postpartum women, they change more hormonally in the first 72 hours after birth than you do in your entire pregnancy. And so that shift is immense. And so no wonder your body and your mind are just trying to keep up. And so the months after pregnancy, those, that time period is called the fourth trimester. There's not really a set end date to the fourth trimester. It's kind of just this open door to the rest of your life, right? We tend to say it's at six weeks. So by six weeks, you should be back to yourself. But most of us, it can easily take up to a year before we're back to ourselves again, right? And so for the, in the conversation of postpartum depression, you know, it's common that you might feel fine in the beginning, but then a few weeks or a few months into it is when you start to feel the depression. So I want you to be aware of that. Even if your baby isn't a newborn, you, the symptoms you're experiencing would still be in the category of postpartum depression. And so recognizing the symptoms and the signs and reaching out for help and support and reaching out for help isn't always like, hey, you, will you help me? It's also like looking for resources, right? Like videos like this. And those are some of the first steps to help you navigate through this tricky time. Um, and I suspect if you're watching this video, you already kind of know the symptoms of postpartum depression and the blues, but I'm gonna go over them anyways. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna go into the solutions. So, the symptoms of the baby blues versus depression. Let's kind of compare those two. In an ideal world, you were well prepared for your birth. You were well prepared for your postpartum. You were well prepared for breastfeeding. You knew what to expect. You knew that the blues were going to be a part of it. So when it came up, you were just expecting it and you just rolled with it easily. Um, because the blues are so common, right? Even after a bliss, butter birth, 
you caught your own baby in the water birth pool and everything was perfect, right? Even then, you still have the blues. But then when you have a traumatic birth or an intense birth, then the blues are much more likely to be a part of your reality. The thing about the blues though, they tend to pass more quickly and they tend to not be so debilitating as uh, depression. You know, so the, the, the symptoms of the blues are mood swings and weepiness and the ability to like, you lose your ability to sleep and you lose your ability to eat and you lose your ability to focus, right? That doesn't mean you have postpartum depression per se. And I'm not saying like the blues are a picnic and a walk in the park, but I am saying that they're temporary and the things in this video will absolutely help you, okay? However, when or if the symptoms start to escalate and they last longer and they start to interfere with your ability to take care of yourself and to take care of your baby and to take care of your daily life, that's postpartum depression and your mental health care must be a priority and it's time to seek like professional help and talk to your care provider. Okay, so the symptoms, like I said, usually develop a few weeks or months postpartum, but sometimes it starts as early as pregnancy. Women are depressed in their pregnancy. And then sometimes it doesn't even start to like up to a year later. So, and when you go through this and you don't get the help you need and it's not treated and it's not supported, it just goes on for months and for years and it just goes on and on and on and on. So, let's go through the list. I'm going to read it off the list, right? Okay. So, here are the lists. So, depressed mood or severe mood swings, excessive crying, difficulty bonding with your baby, withdrawing from your family and with your, from your friends, a loss of appetite or eating too much, an inability to sleep or you're sleeping too much, an overwhelming fatigue or just a loss of energy, Reduced interest in the things that used to bring you pleasure. Um, an intense irritability and anger or rage. Um, fear that you're not a good mother. Hopelessness. Feeling of worthlessness, shame, guilt, inadequacy. Diminished ability to think clearly or to concentrate or to make decisions. Restlessness. Severe anxiety or panic attacks. Thoughts of harming yourself and your baby. Or reoccurring thoughts of death and suicide. I don't know about you, but on a good day I experience a lot of some of these things. You know, like, oh, you know, just like, oh. So give me a little thumbs up or heart if you can relate to any of these symptoms. And if you're going through this right now. Because really there's the next level the next level of severe postpartum depression and that's called postpartum psychosis and it's rare and it typically starts pretty much immediately after the birth but these are important for you to know so you can recognize it in yourself or recognize it in a friend right okay so postpartum psychosis is a person is experiencing confusion or they're really disoriented Right? They have obsessive thoughts about their babies. And they're not like, oh, isn't my baby cute? It's more like they're just obsessively, obsessive worrying about their baby. They have hallucinations or delusions, right? They're at sleep disturbances. They're, they're like excessively agitated, excessively angry, excessively rageful, right? And they're paranoid. They have um, paranoid and they're very nervous about things. And they have attempts. So before, the person that was depressed thought about how they would maybe hurt themselves or the baby. A, a, um, a person in psychosis tries to hurt themselves and tries to hurt their babies. So that is in a, in a super severe situation and the things in this video are not able to touch the needs that they have. And so please seek care immediately, okay? One other thing before we get into the solutions is like postpartum depression is a real thing for men too or for partners too. I mean, of 
course they can experience depression and they have almost all the same symptoms you know like they feel stressed they feel overwhelmed they're sad they're fatigued they have anxiety so it changes how they sleep it changes how they eat it changes how they behave right and so especially young men or men that are have a history of depression or men that are in um, you know that are in relationship problems or they're stressed out about their finances I mean they're the most susceptible right and then the the negative ramifications is just as damaging on themselves and their whole image of self-worth and on their relationships and on their baby and on their infant and their child's development as it is as if a mother was postpartum depressed right and so, and I think that's why um, it's also so challenging for men because they have so many temptations and so many opportunities to actually leave the situation, right? And that's why I think so many men run, right? It's not that they're bad men, it's just that they're afraid, they're depressed, they're ill-equipped, so they run, they drink, they cheat, they fight, they, they, that's what they do, right? So let's just all just take a deep breath, right? Because that's heavy, right? That's heavy. And but that's what's happening, right? And so I just want to check in with you before we get into the solutions. Like, how are you feeling of these things? What are coming up for you? Are you experiencing these things? Do you have a loved one that's experiencing these things? And share, when you share your vulnerabilities and when you share your victories and when you share your challenges, it shows to the community that we're all in this together. And then it also, you might say the exact thing that somebody else needs to hear to help them get through this rough patch. Okay, so I invite you to keep the channels of communication open. All right, but let's get into it. Let's get into the solutions, right? I'm going to have a sip. There are lots of things that you can do, your family can do, your postpartum doula can do, your community can do. I mean, as I was writing this and preparing for this, I thought of like so many more things to add to this list. But I know it's hard enough to take care of the day to day. So let's not add a bunch to your list. Let's keep it simple. Okay, so here we go. Number one. I made a video last week about 25 simple ways to improve your mood. Watch that. Number two, I have tons of resources for you. They're linked below of postpartum videos and breastfeeding videos and herbal videos and all the things. They're all linked below. And then number three, share all those resources with your people, with your loved ones that are gonna help you so that they know how to help you and they don't need to ask you how to help you. They can step up and be there for you in real ways, okay? All right, so let's clear that one. And then just right off the bat, you know, you wanna have food that improves your mood. And you know, just like we acknowledge, like putting one foot in front of the other, getting through this whole depression fog is a challenge in and of itself. And so food, nourishment, and nutrition are the first things to get pushed to the wayside, right? And our body teaches us over and over and over again. It's so wise and it says, look, I can't give you what I don't have, right? And so in order to be able to breastfeed your baby and have a bright mood, you have to feed your body. So making nourishment a priority. And so a quick little list, you know, keep fresh produce on hand and eat foods that are high in fats, good fats and good proteins. Like think, and high in vitamins and minerals. So think of like dark leafy greens, hard boiled eggs, salmon, avocados, nuts, jerky, cheese and crackers, eat a chicken leg first thing in the morning, eat some protein bars, right? And I have a blog post for you all about healthy, quick breastfeeding snacks that help, that make it really easy for you to get the nourishment you need. Also, drink a gallon of water every day, right? 
and um, keep drinking your pregnancy tea, start drinking breastfeeding tea, and consider drinking a nourishing adaptogenic tea that helps with your hormonal shifts that's safe for pregnancy, like women's balance. I'll tell you a little bit more about those in just a second, but having those teas will really help get you hydrated and nourishment. It counts as both as water and nourishment, okay? And then in terms of supplements, like vitamins and minerals, you know, you wanna keep taking your prenatal vitamins. Your B vitamins are gonna be really helpful. Your vitamin D, fish oil, CBD oil, and energizing chlorophyll. Um, last, couple, recently, I made a video about CBD oil and breastfeeding. So if you've been having questions about that, watch that video and it talks a lot about depression so it's really related to this video um and then energizing chlorophyll you mean you could be feeling depleted because you just gave birth and you just lost a lot of blood i mean when soon as you if you had a hemorrhage or a traumatic birth or even a c-section that appears like you didn't bleed very much but they vacuum out they suction out so much blood that you did have a hemorrhage is so that you're depleted and that that could be a contributing factor so you want to boost your iron you want to oxygenate yourself so energizing chlorophyll is a wonderful way to do that and it has a nice little fresh peppermint taste and it like really enlivens you and uplifts you especially when you're heavy right i mean i just put a few drops in my water but see it's going to look all nice and green when you do that it's really a live vibrant color Okay, so the next thing that you can do, it could be controversial for some, but it really doesn't have to be. It doesn't, but we'll see where you fall in this. It's utilizing the placenta as medicine, right? It's consuming the placenta. And so I have, I have a fascination and a love with the placenta, actually. And I've written a blog about it, it's linked below, about all the ways you can honor the placenta after giving birth. And it talks about ways that you can consume the placenta. So that's more extensive, but just in brief, I'm gonna share these things. And I do wanna share this with you, even though you are postpartum, this is just a little nugget for you to have, right? And something important for you to know. If you're ever at a birth or at your next birth, and there is excessive bleeding and the placenta is out of the body then you can take a little piece of that placenta you can rinse it off or don't even rinse it off take a piece of that placenta and a small little piece and put it in your mouth or put it in your client's mouth and that they, if they can hold it under their tongue, that would be great, but some people don't do that and they just swallow it. So give them little pieces of the placenta, like a pill, like a small amount. That will immediately help clamp down the uterus and help stop bleeding. It can be life-saving. If you're ever, like you're a doula or something, or you're a midwife and you're ever at a birth and you don't have equipment and she's bleeding and the placenta's out, make her eat her placenta. It can save her life. Okay. Other things about the placenta, my favorite way to deal with the placenta, to offer the placenta, and it's another real gift and beauty of a home birth, is you can have a placenta smoothie right after birth, and then your midwife, I used to have this whole protocol and way to do it. It's super amazing. The placenta smoothie will, um, you won't taste the placenta in it, but the women that consume their placenta, they absolutely, their milk comes in faster, they make more milk, they bleed less, and they have less postpartum depression. There's been so many studies that show it, and there's so many people that express this. So my favorite way is the smoothie, and I go into more detail on that blog post. But the most common way, the vast majority of the way that people are consuming their placenta is in capsules. And when you consume it in a capsule, then the placenta is a little bit more treated like an herb or a supplement rather than food, which is fine. Um, this is the brief overview of the steps, is you get the placenta, you wash it off, you steam it, you dehydrate, you steam it, you slice it up, you dehydrate it, you grind it up, 
And then at this point, you could add herbs. I never did that, but you could add herbs. And, um, and then you encapsulate it. You put it in the little capsules. An average amount of capsules that you'll make, I, you know, I've processed lots of placentas. I would say you get between like 80 capsules to 150 capsules, depending on the size of the baby. But whoever does your placenta for you, you have to talk to them because there are very real do's and very real don'ts that apply to consuming the placenta. So you have to know what you're doing and there's a real reason for that. And so midwives do it for you, can process your placenta, apprentice midwives, childbirth educators, your doulas. There's somebody in your community that can process your placenta. Um, all right, so chime in. I mean, have you, are, have you consumed your placenta? How did you do it? What experiences did you have? What results did you have? What did you think was going to happen and didn't? Okay, so let's talk about the herbs. As an herbalist, you know, I love the herbs, and I want to share some postpartum herbs with you. And, you know, there's so many herbs that are really helpful for you right now and postpartum and, and also for breastfeeding moms that I had to just, like, dwindle it down so we could have a, a shorter video. But um, these herbs that I selected are my favorites because they're high in vitamins and minerals that your body so desperately needs and because they help with hormonal shifts and because they can help you with your pain relief and they can help you with your stress and your anxiety and your depression. So that's a pretty big thing that a few plants can do. The my favorites are nettle and red raspberry leaf. Those are my favorite nourishing herbs. Just in brief, think of nettle as high in iron and red raspberry leaf, think of it as a uterine toner and it's also full of so many vitamins and minerals. And then the next one that I love is lemon balm. It's not so nourishing, but it is nourishing, but it is really known for its aspect of joy. It's uplifting and it's bright and yet it's calming and it's a joyful herb. And then my favorite adaptogenic herb is ashwagandha. And all those herbs that I just mentioned are in women's balance. And women's balance is safe for breastfeeding and it's safe for postpartum. And it's like I said, it's gonna really help you with your hormonal shifts. It'll also help boost your immune system. If you had a big bleed and that's why you're so depressed, you're also susceptible to infections. So Women's Balance has that extra added um, ability to help with your immune system and boost your mood. And then, um, yeah, and I made a video recently, actually it was last year, almost to the day, I'm really in my life processing a lot of cycles of things that have happened, and this video has come up a few times. It's called How to Transform the Simple into the Sacred, and when you make a cup of tea, that in and of itself is an act of self-love, right? And in that video, I go into more detail, however, I just want to say when you're depressed, you need sacred holy moments to lighten up your day, right? These sacred holy moments, I mean, those are the special things, right? That's just enough to shift you. So when you can realize that you're connected to the, the water and the fire and the air and the earth, it helps you feel centered and grounded and connected to something that's far bigger than you, right? And it gives you a perspective. So I would watch that video and I would drink tea. <laughs> The other thing that, other herb I want to share with you is motherwort. I want to praise motherwort because motherwort really helps mothers. And she, it's called the lion hearted. So she shouldn't think of a fierce mother with an open heart and she's going to protect her baby and she has compassion and love and kindness and yet she has healthy boundaries, right? She is the motherwort, the lion hearted. And so motherwort helps women, especially when they're angry and they're agitated and they're stressed out and they're maxed out, but then they can't, they can't just lose their cool and run off, right? They have to stay and keep cooking dinner and they have to face their life. Right? And motherwort helps them do that, equips them and bolsters them up with the strength that they need. And it doesn't make you feel weird. You don't even notice you feel different other than that you feel better. 
right? And so motherwort is one of the primary herbs that I blend in Nurtured Mother. Nurtured Mother is a tincture that has motherwort in it. It also has red raspberry leaf in it. And it has chamomile and cramp bark and, and, and other herbs. The, the, the purpose of Nurtured Mother is to help you bolster up your emotions like I just described, but also because you pushed a baby out or you're holding a baby and your, your body is sore, you're not sleeping well, you ache, right? Your uterus is cramping, you're postpartum bleeding. So the point of this, this um, remedy is to help you not bleed so much, not hurt so much and feel a little bit better as you're breastfeeding and as you're um, being a postpartum mom, even if you're not nursing and even if you're not bleeding. Nurtured Mother is still a wonderful remedy for you. And I really like teas and tinctures for new moms because, so if you're an experienced herbalist, you know, they're easy to make, easy to do. But if you're brand new and you're brand new to the world of herbs and you're like overwhelmed by so many things, then, you know, teas and tinctures are easy to do, easy to make. You just put the tincture in your mouth. And I have a video about that too, but it's a very accessible, very effective. You can feel the results. It's accessible to you. Don't be afraid to take teas and tinctures, okay? Now, my other favorite remedy and almost holy experience are postpartum herb baths. Now, postpartum herb baths do require somebody else to make it for you. Like, please don't be like making your own bath and scrubbing your own tub and uh, carrying the heavy water in. The point is also in postpartum is that other people are there and we're allowing them to help you, right? So please let them make the bath for you. But the bath is just like what I just described. You have so much like physical and emotional pain and your perineum hurts, you might have stitches, you might have had a C-section, you might have had an episiotomy, you might have pushed, you might have torn, you might have felt bruised, I mean, on and on, right? Your lady parts are tender. Plus, your breasts have been, you've been nursing, you have cracked, sore, bleeding nipples, you have swollen milk ducts, you have maybe a concern of supply or an oversupply, and on and on and on and on, right? Your shoulders are sore, on and on and on and on. So the herb bath helps all those things, <laughs> right? Just get in the bath. And get in the bath with your baby. And even if your baby still has the umbilical cord, and I'm not going to go into every detail about all these herbs in here because I've made an extensive bunches of videos about postpartum herb bath that are all linked below. But they're safe for you. They're safe for your baby. They're good for you when you're bleeding. They help you stop bleeding, they help you feel better. And the beauty of the bath also is a challenge of postpartum depression is sometimes it's hard to connect with your baby or you're having a breastfeeding problem and they're not really like latching on and it's really frustrating. And the beauty of the bath also is to have your own self time and then when you're ready, the baby comes in and you have the lights down low and you can like, the baby, you can float the baby. You can turn the baby around. Here's my little girl baby. Instead of like holding the baby like this, turn the baby around and allow the baby to float and then like have your hands under their head gently or maybe gently under their bottom. You'll find the right spot, right? And then they like unwind. It's really beautiful to watch them because they like, they move their body in a way, they unwind and they open their eyes. And sometimes it's some of the first time you're really deeply looking into their eyes because if you have the lights down, maybe a candle, they can see you and you can see them. The bonding experience is really special, right? So it doesn't matter if you're two days, an hour postpartum or six months postpartum, take the bath if you need it, okay, together with your baby and allow that bonding process to unfold. It's super special. Okay, and the links are below, okay? And um, and the couple more things. So let's start talking about meditation because we wanna lift the fog, lift the weight. We wanna find our center, right? And you know, I'm just talking to you as a person, like as a fellow human on the path of life, but you know, 
If you're experiencing postpartum depression right now, there is a pretty good chance, and I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but there's a pretty good chance you're going to experience perimenopausal and postmenopausal depression. And so you might as well learn these life skills now because they're going to help you now and they'll help you later. I know some of you are young moms, right? Some of you are in your 30s. Some of you are in your 40s, right? Perimenopausal is not that far away, right? And the future is like it's going to help you now and in the future. And I'm here to tell you the future is close. So um, utilizing these things can help you feel grounded. Of course, journaling and getting fresh air and going outside. But your breath is always with you, right? Your breath is always with you. And learning how to connect with your breath, anchor your breath, guide your breath, relax your body, soften your mind. That is a critical life skill that will help you in every day, every day in every area. And so meditation is so profound. It is by far my favorite medicine. You know, like I love the placenta, I love the herbs, I love meditation, right? So yeah, and I care about you. So it's I want to give it all. I give you all my favorites. Um, so I've recorded lots of meditations. Some of them are on YouTube and some of them are on SoundCloud. Both of those playlists are linked below. The thing I want to say is some of these meditations are for to help you sleep. Some of them are about your desire. Maybe you're depressed because you wanted your birth to be a certain way, but it wasn't, right? Maybe you're depressed because you feel like you lost your power. So there's meditations to help you go back and claim your power. There's meditations to help connect with your heart. There's meditations to help bless your body and bless your womb. There's meditations, I don't even remember, there's a lot of meditations on there, okay? So I encourage you to go and to just start by being guided through some meditations. One of the favorite ones is yoga nidra meditation, following that one, okay? And then qigong. Qigong is a form of moving meditation. It's very simple. Within a few moments, your mood can be shifted with a few breaths and a few movements. And on that list, it's on YouTube, that it says guided meditations, there is a Qigong, a seven minute Qigong. It says Qigong for immune health. I could have put any name on there. It would have been fine. So we'll call it, for the sake of this video, and if you're watching this far, we'll call it Qigong for depression. And just go ahead and do those seven minutes. If you feel different and feel better, then go to the website Path with Harmony and there's an opportunity for you to get a free class. You don't have to come to the class. You're going to download a class and watch it in the privacy of your own living room. Nobody even knows you did it, right? And then if you liked that class, then join me. You have an open invitation to join me on Zoom every Friday on Zoom at 10 a.m. Central and you can join us live or you can join and pay the donation and you or and you can get the recording and do it on your own. Okay, so I want to give you that and invite you to that. And then one of the few last things I kind of want to say to wrap up is here you are, we're talking about depression and it's, I want to remind you, it's not the time to isolate yourself. Yet, here's the challenge, I mean, First of all, you're depressed, so of course you want to isolate yourself. That's one of the symptoms of depression is you want to be alone and you want to process it and you want to remove yourself from your friends and your family. And as of this recording, we're in COVID. And so we're in quarantine or we're practicing social distancing and so we're isolated and we're alone. And so we got to get creative, right? We got to allow somehow, allow to communicate with our communities, like on Zoom, Qigong class, or, you know, or have a social distance tea outside, or have meetups, and get creative to have adult conversations. And if you don't have a community, but we all have a community, whether it's big or it's small, allow those people in to the best of your ability. Okay, and if you don't have a community in person, we're creating one right here, right? So put, put in the comments, reach out to us, tell us what you're needing and how we can support you. Ask questions, comment on other people's comments, 
so that they feel heard and respected and seen. That's a big part of depression too. We hide away, but we really need to be seen, but we don't know how to say, see me, help me. So we're all trying to support each other here. So in the comments, put all that stuff in the comments and let me know also what has been your hardest part about your postpartum experience, right? And like I said, what is it that you need? What would you like, right? And remember, as we're closing this out, down below you have lots of resources. You have access to all these herbs, lots of videos about herbalism, about meditation, about postpartum and breastfeeding, and about spirituality. It's all down, linked on down below. And I encourage you to please, if you know a loved one or a friend, go ahead and share this video with her and push like and subscribe. And also like right now, take a deep breath and give yourself a hug, appreciate yourself and hug your sweet baby. And I'll see you in the next video. And until next time, my friends, breathe deep and always walk in beauty.